Hello there, everyone, and welcome back. Bogmod here, playing more The Legend of Heroes Fields in the Sky the Third. As we continue to investigate and watch as Mu Major Vander, Major Mueller Vander, and of course, Prince Olivier, Prince Oliver, are scheming to counter this nefarious Chancellor. Are you sure not doing anything regarding him at this time is a good idea? Oh, absolutely! We need some way to find out what the Chancellor was up to after all. We'll probably get some kind of reaction from the Chancellor through his reports at some point. Probably in about two weeks, when the Chancellor's tour is finished. You planned that father had all along, had you? Well, in that case, I'll be sure that we're ready. I'll be counting on you, love. Oh. Something the matter. Not really, it's just that the moon has come out. And what a beautiful full moon it is. Yep, that's a moon, all right. It's strange to think this will be the last time we'll see the moon from here. Truth be told, I'm going to miss it. Well, well, it looks like putting a smile on your face a little more often isn't the only thing liberals done for you. It's up your eyes to life's natural beauty as well. Ah, but in all seriousness, we'll just have to do all we can to be able to come back and see it again one day. While we're both still alive. <laughs> Indeed. Hmm. Hmm. The next morning. <laughs> your Majesty, Your Highness, I humbly thank both of your generous hospitality during my stay in your fine kingdom. You're even gracious enough to humor my brain's request for escort me back to Heimdall aboard their sail. This debt, eh, will be repaired many times over in the future, rest assured of that. Oh, you didn't think this is anything you had had away for. So an honest state guest back home is a matter of course. Take your guest from me your great debt of gratitude. If, if you ever have the opportunity, please do come back to Liberal again in the future. I imagine Stella and Josh will be back by then too. So I'll be able to give you a nice warm welcome. Ah, I'm already excited for my next visit. Have they left the country yet, by the way? Hmm. They're busy getting ready to leave over the enrollment at the moment, I believe. I'm planning to see them off when the time comes. I see. Incidentally, while the ruins of Hamel are secretly sealed off, I'll do all I can on my end to assure they are allowed inside. Could I trouble you to pass that along to them? Mm, certainly. Well, thank you very much, Your Highness. Ah, think nothing of it. It's the least I could do after all they've done for me. I owe you a great deal too, Cassius. If not for your assistance, stopping the dominant division from crossing the Liberal wouldn't have been as simple as it was. Hmm. <laughs> I could say the same to you. Still, as I'm sure you're aware, that outcome will, uh, will well be within the realm of possibility for the Chancellor. I doubt he was even surprised by the incident. Really? Most likely not. Everybody had nothing to gain from using that situation to occupy Liberal. Certainly not to the extent that it would be worth going out of their way to develop inefficient steam tanks. See from doing what he did. Was as a show of power to surrounding nations. A same that without that even without orb of power, Erebonius army could still act. I indeed suspect that was his true aim all along. Goodness! Mm, so you did notice. The orbital shutdown phenomenon was a complete unknown to the rest of the continent. Perhaps it might never occur again, but there's always the chance it might, whether it's here or somewhere else entirely. The here the Empire only built a relatively small number of these tanks in all, too. Certainly not enough to launch a full scale invasion. By the sounds of it, they were just put together in Rainforest factories using parts intended for standard robot tanks. Ah, but as it stands, the know-how to put together tanks like that only exists in the Empire. 
and in these unpredictable times, no other nation has the time or resources to try to develop extremely efficient steam powered weaponry. In a sense, because of what happened, Pyramid's effect as a deterrent is even greater than ever. He's using war as a diplomatic tool, and very effectively at that. None of this had ever even occurred to me. I have a long way to go before I'm fit to be ruler of this country. Ah, don't beat yourself too much about it. He is no ordinary foe, even to the most hardened veterans. The Chancellor's always been thinking several steps ahead of the rest of the world. He is impressive, no matter what we may think of his actual ideas. Ah, I'm quite the reckless fool to be trying to challenge him, if I do say so myself. Don't be silly, Your Highness. Don't you say that with a smile on your face, it's utterly beyond me. You should focus on building yourself a strong foothold to begin with. You'll be careful. No matter what may occur, be sure not to lose sight of exactly where you stand. Ah, of course, your majesty. If I were to go and bring shame upon myself now, I'll be wasting all the effort involved in escorting me back home. I'll be sure to take what you have said to heart. Uh, excuse me, your majesty. Hilda? Whatever is the matter? It's not enough to see you so flustered. Just that I guess you, for you arrived all of a sudden at the castle. You're rushing when you're meeting with others. So regular that I thought you should know at once. How so? Ah, it sounds like it's about time for me to take my leave then. Actually, I greet you as well, and not just Her Majesty. <gasps> I wonder if it's the Chancellor himself. What? Hmm. Hilda, just who is this visitor? Well... Chancellor Goliath Osborne of the Aeroponian Empire! Ah, cunning! Oh! That's a nefarious face. He gets my evil voice. Ah, it's an honor to be granted a personal audience. I am Gilead Osborne, representative of the Imperial Government. My apologies for the abrupt intrusion. So you are Chancellor Osborne. And it's a pleasure to see you again as well, Your Highness. It's been a year since we last met, has it not? Of these passing months have seen you well. Yes, a year sounds about right. Still, while I hope you'll forgive me for asking, just what did prompt someone of your stature to appear at the castle without warning? I'd very much like to hear your side of the story. My apologies, <laughs> Your Highness. You see, these past few days I've been touring Eastern Erebonia on routine inspections. It's been going very smoothly, uh, more so than I had initially anticipated. In the free time of my schedule to pay a, a cordial visit. Oh my, is that so? Naturally, I would have preferred to come here while the crisis was still unfolding, like you yourself did, Your Highness. Unfortunately, the confusion in Southern Erebonia was simply too pressing a matter, and I had no choice but to deal with that first. And this was the first chance that presented itself to come here and meet directly with Her Majesty, and so I acted with utmost expediency. I hope you'll forgive my lack of proper decorum and failing to give advance notice of my arrival. Ah, that does make sense, at least. But regardless, please don't concern yourself with me. No doubt you should offer your greetings to Her Majesty. My thanks. Your Highness. Well then. Allow me to extend my most heartfelt greetings to both of you, Queen Alicia and... Princess Claudia, it's abundantly clear that the crisis that unfolded here has been quite the ordeal for yourselves and for your nation's people. 
You have my deepest sympathies for the hardships you've endured, as well as my commendation for bringing the situation under control. Hi. I, I thank you for your kind words, Your Excellency. If anything, we should be pausing to you for the fact that the southern side of your nation was caught up in what should have been our problem. We should be the ones going to you rather than having you trouble yourself to come all the way to Liberal. I beg you to accept our apologies together with my deepest thanks for coming here today. I would never ask for apologies. I've heard that what happened was the work of a shadow organization stirring up trouble within your borders. While I meant well by sending a military force to aid you, I wouldn't have done something so careless had I known the truth of the matter. My actions were rash, foolish even, and I was rightfully reprimanded by his imperial majesty for them. Oh my. Unfortunately, his highness, the prince, was able to act with all due haste to put right my misstep before even greater harm was done. And I owe you a great debt of gratitude for that, your highness. And congratulations besides for your part in bringing an end to the crisis. Oh, I did nothing out of the ordinary. With a lot of help from Her Majesty, Her Highness, and Brigadier General Bright here, too. Bright, you say? It is a pleasure to meet you, Your Excellency. I am Cassius Bright, a Brigadier General in the Berlian Royal Army. Hmm. Well, the pleasure is all mine, I assure you. Your name is rather well known, even in the Empire. Not as much as yours is known here in Liberal, I would imagine. It's an honor to be able to speak with you in person. It's certainly a surprise you were, you, to be able to, though. Coming here on a whim can't have been easy for a man as busy as yourself. It sounds as though I may have underestimated just how capable you truly are. Not at all. I was greatly impressed to see the Royal Army's effectiveness in dealing with the tumult here. Your forces have proven powerful yet flexible, and capable of dealing with emergencies ably and decisively. I might go so far as to say it embodies an idea that the Imperial Army, with its swollen ranks, could never hope to realize. You flatter us, Your Excellency. For your part, I hear you were responsible for the establishment of the Imperial Army's famed Intelligence Division. Our army is in desperate need of a new one of its own, so I find myself quite envious. Hmm. It almost sounds as though the two of us each want what the other has. Ha ha ha! So it does. May I ask honestly what you will be doing now? For my part, I'm intending to leave Liberal today, so I'm afraid I won't be around much longer. Yes, so I've been told. You're intended to meet your grand arrival in Heimdall or aboard the famous All Sail. I'm impressed you're already where. You shouldn't be. His lackey is right there and he knows, so... I almost wish I could return to Erebonia on board it alongside you. But alas, I'm afraid I have other business demanding my attention after I'm finished. Yeah. I'll be leaving Liberal separately this afternoon. That is a shame. I'd very much have liked to invite you to this evening's banquet. Please. You need not go to such troubles on my account. I feel as though you've put you through enough showing up unannounced as I did. To say nothing of dining with such esteemed company. Still. I do have some time before the airship I'll be leaving on is due to depart. Might I ask for a little of your time, your highness? I have a few things I'd like to discuss with you, personally. <laughs> Gasp. Very well. I have some other stuff I'd actually like to discuss personally with you as well. What a... Fortuitous coincidence. Allow me to have a room arranged for the two of you to have your discussion then. Hilda, if you would. From your Majesty. Mm 
<laughs> oh, I'm liking, I'm liking this. What schemey schemes are scheming? It's obvious that Her Majesty is quite the tea fancy of this blend is anything to go by. The fragrance, the temperature, the taste. I'd be hard pressed to find a fault with any of it. I've always been more of a coffee man myself. But I have no doubt that I'd be content with a cup of this at my desk each morning. As much as I agree with you, I don't believe we're here to talk about beverages. So shall we get right to the point? What did you want to discuss with me? <laughs> I see your sojourn in liberal has proven most fruitful. Pardon? When last we spoke, you struck me as a bright, flexible young man. And no doubt you still are, but now... I see in you a resilient inner strength girding those aspects. I'm sure His Majesty will be most delighted with your personal development. Da! Meanwhile, I see you're the same fearless man I've always known you to be. More so, even, that crushing awe about you seems to have only grown with time. As if you feed on the resentment of those, of those who live in these territories you annex. <laughs> uh, such. Harsh words, your highness. Personally, I prefer the term political unification. Annex can carry such negative connotations, you know. Since the end of the Hundred Days' War, our army hasn't committed a single act of aggression. All our unifications have been entirely peaceful. Oh, you're quite right about that. On the surface. Oh? It's amazing how similar the annexation process is every single time it happens. Except with a small nation or independent state with an array of problems beyond repair. Those problems start to worsen after Jaegers and other dangerous elements enter, plunging public order to an all time law. Desperate for solution, the local government could help for the Imperial Army before they know it, they're part of the Empire. Well, it's not as though I can deny what you're saying. Each instance does share certain commonalities. Still, it's to be expected, an inevitable consequence of the age of unchecked growth and progress in which we live. The Imperial Army is to be acting in the Empire's best interests and helping to stabilize our neighbors for the good of the Empire. And it's understandable that they would. I do find myself rather curious why thousands of his members are going to such a nation with such peculiar frequency. Well, before the problems I describe worse than or less. <laughs> I will press you as to where you came by such information. And as curious as I am. But I will say this. At its most basic level, their actions are about risk management. Because we've been acting to minimize such risk beforehand, and that the army has been able to successfully quell each problem in turn. With the small price of earning the disdain of the people in those nations, and an increased risk of terrorism in exchange. To tell the truth, I'm rather astounded with the courage coming to liberal all on your own to begin with. After all, you've earned yourself the biggest target for terrorists in all of Erebonia. <laughs> your concern is. Touching, your highness. I would ask that you not trouble yourself with my safety. I employ some very skilled subordinate tasks primarily with eliminating the risk of terrorist attacks against me. Really now? That lector is one of those, I assume. Hmm. A rather peculiar fellow, isn't he? But a very useful one, all the same. Working on the schedule for this trip, taking all the necessary precautions to ward off terrorist threats were both his doing. And thanks to his commendable efforts, I can depart for Crossbell free from worries as soon as I've finished my business here. Crossbell! 
And are you surprised? <laughs> and I'll be participating in top secret discussion with a representative of the Crossbell government. Recently, a large amount of funding has been made to the country through Republican channels, putting our allies on the defensive. And so I'd always meant to visit at some point, and this seemed the perfect opportunity. Are you out of your mind? Crossbell's full of enemies and different factions, each other's thoughts. I hear it's not even a hot of terrorist and criminal organization because of its position as a buffer state. Does it really sound like a place the Arbonian Chancellor should be going in on an unofficial visit? I'm surprised to hear you advocating caution in the face of <laughs> potential danger, your highness. After all, it was you who flew onto an ancient city at great risk to your own safety and returned unharmed after surveying it. Because it's rousing risk-taking, my visit to Crossbell will be child's play. As I'm sure you're aware, you're regarded as something of a hero back in Arbonia now. Ah, to see the hero make a grand return, befitting his newly minted legend, and aboard the famous Arsail, no less. Naturally, our hero has also taken the time to ensure that everyone on newspaper, magazine, or wherever is homecoming too. Oh, I have no doubts that your triumphant arrival will be ever a bit as glorious as it's played on your imaginings, your highness. Ah. <laughs> Do be sure to capitalize on this chance as best you can to build yourself a firm foothold. I expect great things from you after all. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to laugh like that there. All right. Well, well, well. What evil. What nefariousness. And what is this Lecter guy up to? Is he actually an Ouroboros agent? I think he might be. But if he is, we will find that out next time. So thank you for watching. I hope you've all been enjoying things. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon. Otherwise, talk to everyone later.